This video shows you the top 10 breakout players in the 2020 NBA playoffs. Some of the talents on this list broke out into superstar caliber, while others filled extremely valued roles. So you're about to see the young players who didn't fold to the pressure of the postseason and came through when their teams needed them most. Welcome to D-Flow Hoops if this is your first time here and you're a passionate basketball fan craving for rankings, breakdowns, plus all types of entertaining NBA content. Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. To be clear, this list isn't a ranking and is in no particular order, but let's get into it. Number one, Lou Gwentz Dort. The numbers in his first five career playoff games weren't pretty, but the rookie from Arizona State, Lou Dort, stayed aggressive, and in game six slash seven in round one against Houston, Dort combined to shoot 15 of 30 from the field, which included a stunning 30 points in game seven. However, he cracks this list of players who broke out in 2020's playoffs because of his defense on James Harden. The Canadian Lou proved to us all that he's got some serious clamps, and as the main beard stopper, Dort's strength and lateral quickness was a big reason that OKC was a bucket away from advancing to the West Semis. I know Harden still found a way to average just under 30 points, but that's seven points below what he averaged in the regular season. Lou Dort was clearly bothering the former MVP, and his old-school physicality make him the perfect playoff defender. Despite Lou's NFL running back-like bulkiness that make him a lockdown perimeter stopper, he wasn't selected in 2019's NBA draft. But proving people wrong after going undrafted isn't the first time in Dort's life that he's overcome the odds. No one would have thought that a kid from Montreal, Canada, with French being his first language, would end up disrupting the rhythm of one of the greatest scorers of this generation in James Harden in a playoff series. The two-way potential with this man, Lou Dort, is off the charts. Thunder fans should be excited about him. This man only started playing basketball at the age of 12, so his story's pure proof that if you put in the time, anything is possible. Number two, Duncan Robinson. From playing Division II college basketball at Williams to playing in the NBA Finals, the journey for Duncan Robinson has come full circle. The flamethrower was a key cog in Miami's 16-game steamrolling of their conference, as Duncan scored at least 13 points in eight outings for the East champs. But putting this all in perspective, seven years ago in 2013, Robinson's freshman year in the NCAA was spent at the unknown school of Williams. Duncan averaged 32 points per game at Williams in D2, which earned him a scholarship to the University of Michigan. But even though Duncan was extremely efficient for the Wolverines in three seasons in D1, he went unselected in 2018's NBA draft. The fact that nowadays, Robinson's spacing the floor out for one of the best organizations in the NBA on their way to a title is an incredible story. Number three, Jalen Brown. In the conference finals, Jalen upped his three-point percentage from the semis by 27% and his field goal percentage by 12%. That should prove to you that Jalen Brown's a bona fide all-star and a rising superstar in this league. At 6'8", the man has the shooting ability and ball handling of a point guard and additionally can attack the basket like a freight train. By averaging over 20 points for three straight rounds in the 2020 postseason, Brown proved he's a legit number two option and potentially the go-to option in the future. He's versatile, explosive, laterally quick, and he's got a high IQ, so the sky's the limit for Jalen Brown. Number four, Luka Doncic. In his first postseason, the 21-year-old Doncic set the NBA record for the most points in a player's playoff debut as he scored 42 points in Game 1 against the Clippers. He also passed Oscar Robertson and Charles Barkley, who were the only players with at least 40 points, 15 rebounds, and 10 assists, to become the first player in NBA playoff history with at least 43 points, 17 rebounds, and 13 assists. We knew Luka was an all-star, but we didn't know he was capable of averaging 31, 10, and 9 in a playoff series. George and Kawhi are a few of the NBA's best perimeter defenders, but Luka had no problem embarrassing them. The Slovenian phenoms got a flair for the dramatic, and the 2020 playoffs was only the first chapter in Doncic's growing legend. Number 5, Tyler Harrow. No moments too big for the Kentucky Wildcat product Tyler Harrow. This man etched himself into the history books with a blistering Game 4 performance, scoring a career-high 37 points. I covered Harrow's breakout postseason in a separate video. You should watch that after this. 
but some of you in the comments section were relating him to Stephen Curry, or relating his potential to Stephen Curry. I think that's a bit extreme, but you have to remember this man's 20 years old and came up huge on the biggest stage. For most young players, playing without fans in such a tough period for humanity got to them in these playoffs, and they let the pressure get the best of them. Rightfully so. It's been a tough time. But Tyler Harrow embraces that pressure. He wants to take the shots that either swing games or win you them down the stretch. So Steph Curry will be a tough ceiling to live up to, but because of his handles, shot creating, and ability to step up in the clutch, Tyler Harrow can be as good as he wants. The next five you can't miss first big man gets on the speaks board for saying LeBron's biggest motivation is trying to prove that the real MVP that matters is the finals MVP. Great take. The best answer on the question coming up gets next video shout out. Any answer or regular comment is greatly appreciated. Number six, Donovan Mitchell. The spider went off in a seven game one-on-one -on -one battle for the ages with Jamal Murray. Like several players you've seen and are about to see in this video, D. Mitch has already been named to an all-star team. But for this list, we're taking into account stars who've made the jump into superstars. A superstar carries his team through the roughest moments with his utter domination and hits daggers in the clutch. That's precisely what Donovan Mitchell did against a team that was three games away from reaching the NBA Finals. I know his 36.5 points per game came over a short and sweet seven games as Denver eliminated Utah, but Mitchell's been the leader in NBA playoff points per game. So it's safe to say Mitchell proved he's one of the best young players in the NBA and debatably a top 10 player overall. Number seven, Tim Hardaway Jr. Called upon to be the second scorer with Porzingis' right meniscus tear, Tim put up 18 points per game on solid percentages in the 2020 playoffs. I know he struggled in game six, but he was nursing a neck strain and wasn't in his typical scoring role, with five games of solid production before game six counted on as a number two scoring option and not at 100%. Tim Hardaway Jr. proved that he's extremely dangerous because when he's fully healthy and the third scorer like he's supposed to be instead of the second, you can bet he'll be way more efficient than he just was. Number eight, Jamal Murray. NBA fans are desperate to find a player other than LeBron James to somewhat challenge Michael Jordan's GOAT status, potentially overtake it at some point. Of course, the fourth year player, the Blue Arrow, just lost to the King in five games, but you can't overlook that at the young age of 23, Jamal Murray went on a mesmerizing playoff tear to get past two of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA. Before the Clippers took on the Nuggets, Kawhi Leonard was debatably the best defender in basketball. Jamal Murray completely exposed both the claw and another reputable lockdown defender in Paul George. So you never know how good Denver's Canadian phenom at guard could ultimately become. He broke a ton of NBA records, which I'm going to cover in another tens list. Subscribe for that. But it's clear that Murray has a shot at being one of the best superstars in basketball over the next decade. Number nine, Jason Tatum. Jason's already made the Eastern Conference Finals three times and like Jamal Murray, is only in his fourth pro season. After I made my Raptors videos throughout the entire year, personally, I have to apologize to both Tatum and the Celtics, because I, among many analysts and media members, assumed that Boston was just still too young to get past a team like Toronto. We never gave the Celtics the respect they deserve. Jason Tatum showed off his Paul Pierce-like shot creating ability all playoffs, which led Beantown two wins away from the finals. Even though Boston needs more help up front, Jason showed off just how scary his offensive potential really is for other East contenders. With Tatum's seven foot wingspan mixed with his shiftiness and polished shooting, that led him to score at least 20 points in 12 of Boston's 15 playoff games. He stepped up to the pressure of the moment, eliminated the reigning champions, and broke the heart of every fan in Toronto, including yours truly. Before number 10, honorable mentions to Jeremy Grant, Michael Porter Jr., Contavious Caldwell Pope, and Norman Powell. Let me know if I forgot anyone in the comments section. Number 10, Bam Adebayo. Now you're looking at the reason why I just said the Celtics need more front court depth. It's because Bam Bam bullied Daniel Tice and anyone put in front of him all series long. After his utter dominance to lead Miami back to the finals, it's now safe to say that Adebayo is a top three center in the NBA. I mean, other than Jokic and maybe Embiid, who could you rank ahead of Bam at his position? In game six of the conference finals, 
to lead the Heat to a decisive closeout win over the Celtics. Adebayo posted 32 points, 14 rebounds, and 5 assists while shooting 11 of 15 from the field. Bam was named to the 2020 All-Star team, but no one thought he was a superstar. Unfortunately, Bam got hurt in Game 1 of the NBA Finals, but he's hopeful to return, and once he does, he could really help the Heat. Overall though, it's been incredible to watch Adebayo's development in his first three seasons, from Bam's sophomore season to 2019-20, his scoring per game improved by 7 points. Then he followed up an MIP type season by proving he's one of the best big men in the NBA in the postseason. Heat fans will tell you he's the real most improved player of the year. I say he's the most versatile two-way center in our game. Subscribe if you enjoyed that content, keep watching some of my recent uploads, answer the shout out question. This was DFlow, thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next video.